Breed-specific legislation is animal laws pertaining to certain breeds of dog. So, for example, the most common breed that is discriminated against nowadays is pit bulls or American pit bull terriers, American Staffordshire terriers, American bull terriers. Um, there are also there's also breed specific laws pertaining to German shepherds, Rottweilers, Huskies, Boxers, Akitas, Chows, Dobermans. Um, there's kind of a long list, but most commonly, breed specific legislation um, discriminates against pit bull type dogs. Breed specific legislation is normally there they come in the form of bans so there is breed bans in cities there's also restrictions in other cities so whereas some cities might ban a breed altogether other cities have restrictions whereas maybe um, your dog has to have a muzzle and has to have a beware of dog sign and you have to have special insurance um, and this is all based around the breed alone it's not based around behavior or temperament or anything else I currently own a dog that is affected by BSL she has not personally been affected, however, she is a pit mix, so I cannot take her into certain cities with breed bands. She's a really good dog. I use her as a demo dog at work. She's very well-mannered, well-temperament, and she does get discriminated against just because of the way she looks. My dog is, uh, she's a girl. She's named Lady. She's the most friendly dog I think I've ever met. She does not bark at all. I don't think I heard her bark until like a month after we adopted her. She only barks when she's playing. It's never a mean thing. It's always a playful thing with her. This is Marley. He is a black lab pit bull mix, and he is easily one of the smartest dogs I've ever met. He's also a giant goof. He's also just so unbelievably sweet, and I could never picture my life without him. Brain specific legislations kind of make me feel like I'm always somewhat judged a little bit because People believe that laws are always put in place for a reason, and that's not necessarily the case, especially when it comes to pit bulls and pit bull type dogs, because the legislations are usually put in in these kinds of communities because of just fear, because they're afraid of what could happen. And instead of targeting the source of the problem, they target the animal itself. My dog's name is Dexter. He's an American Bulldog mix, but he gets called a pit bull all the time. He's a really good boy. He gets along with other dogs. He gets along with people. He loves my niece. When I lived in Florissant, Missouri, we had an issue with the city because they had BSL, and even though he's an American Bulldog, they considered him a pit bull. They sent me a citation for him even though he'd never caused any issues. He'd never gotten loose. He'd never bit anybody. He didn't even really bark at people. I had to actually rehome him with my grandmother for about a year while we fought the breed-specific legislation in Florissant which we did end up getting it overturned and he was able to come back to live with me, but that's a year of my dog's life that I missed out on because of the way he looks. I do believe that BSL has influenced the public and the way that they feel about certain dogs. It is normal for people that aren't necessarily animal experts. If their city government bans a certain breed, they automatically see those breeds as a danger when that's not actually true. You know, we all want safe and humane communities for people and pets, but the focus should be on the behavior of the dog and the behavior of the owner. That's what matters. I work closely with various organizations on addressing the problems of and trying to resolve problems with uh, breed-specific legislation. I'm not an advocate for any breed, but I am an advocate for considering each dog as an individual and assessing behavior and actions by those individual considerations. More and more, I think they're racially biased. Um, I think that a lot of communities um, believe that those people have a certain type of dog. This occurred in Florissant. When they were considering a breed discriminatory law years ago, I went to testify against it, and the mayor called me over and said, it, this isn't about the dogs. We want to keep those people out of Florissant. I think dogs are, are the new kind of redlining. You know, basically they, they would redline and prevent people from having insurance in certain districts because of a racial component. I think that has gone over to the dogs right now. Some people that are very active seem to be motivated by personal revenge, where a 
single incident to them has caused them to dedicate themselves to eradicating all dogs that look like that, no matter what they act like. Sometimes it simply becomes a power play and who can tell whom what to do and what they can't do. So it's a grouping of motivations, none of which seem to be motivated by either public safety or any kind of fairness or humane action towards the animals. The first motivation from BSL, I believe, coincided with dogfighting. Dogfighting became really popular in the 80s, and the first wave of breed-specific laws actually was also in the 80s. So it was originally a way to combat dogfighting, and um, it unfortunately has not done that. It's kind of done the opposite of what it was supposed to do, and it is targeted responsible ownership um, instead, and dogfighting continues to be a problem. Dog fighting has become a problem and it still is a problem. Pit bull type dogs are a very muscular, very strong breed and at the same time they're very loyal. They are hardworking, they're eager to please and unfortunately while they make wonderful family dogs, they also attract the wrong type of person. Drug dealers, gang members, dog fighters train them to be attack dogs, they train them to be aggressive, they want them to be dog aggressive so they throw them in the fighting ring. My experience with online communities for and against BSL, it's been interesting to say the least. Uh, social media is very popular now. There are some extremist groups out there. One well-known website is dogsbite.org and the people that run dogsbite.org run a few Facebook groups and other websites as well. In the past, they've had a disclaimer on their website actually that said that some of their information might not be accurate. They tend to get their facts about pit bulls from searching Google for news articles. We've seen a lot of um, propaganda by them and a lot of skewed stats um, that, that legislators seem to take heed about until we explain to them how, you know, their stats are just newspaper clippings and they're not really valid. I've experienced some very negative communities with pit bull. I've seen so many nasty things written about pit bulls and there's been some communities that I've even seen specifically targeting killing pit bulls and pit bull type dogs. I do think, some of them truly do think that these dogs are inherently more aggressive and they truly do believe that they're doing what they think is right. So when someone's so adamantly convinced that they're doing something that's right, it's hard to make that olive branch. I try to, but it's hard. A lot of the anti-pit bull websites I know, a lot of the times it's propaganda that they push. If you talk to any animal control officer, they can tell you that dogs of all different types do this kind of stuff. The pro-BSL people get irritated with me because I will say, hey, this is a good, solid dog, and this dog does not deserve whatever is being done to it. And I sometimes irritate the advocates because if I find an individual dog whose behavior is really problematic, then I have to fairly admit that this particular dog does either need treatment or different placement, or at times perhaps needs to be euthanized to protect public safety. Usually that's because humans have failed the dog somewhere along the line, but but it's still something that happens. It's very passionate on both sides of the issue, um, but I just encourage everyone to look at facts and talk to the experts before forming their own opinion. To fight BSL laws, the first step would be to punish irresponsible owners and not punish a certain breed of dog just for the way it looks. It is a lot more effective to um, enforce dangerous dog laws that are breed neutral and actually enforce irresponsible ownership laws instead of targeting a, a dog by what it looks like.